Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Hallelujah. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, ye shall live also. I greet you all in the master's name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We come together in grief, acknowledging a human loss. Yet, through your tears, you come to celebrate the life of Martha Caroline Ingram Johnson, a.k.a. Grandma Johnson and Grammy. May God's grace, may it bless you and that pain that you are feeling right now. May God's grace, may you find comfort and may the sorrow in sorrow you find hope and death you find resurrection. During this time, I just want to take a minute to acknowledge her daughter, Rhonda and Charles. Amen. Jeffrey and Desiree. I got it right, Jeffrey. <laughs> Sister Irma Pentagrass. Amen. Her in-laws, Herbert, Marilyn, and Deborah her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren, her caregiver, Donata. I hope I said that right. We want to keep the family lifted in prayer. And all of you know that I want to say to all of you that are here on behalf of the Johnson family, I thank you for your ministry of presence. The ministry of presence says a lot. Without even saying a word, your love is felt. And at this time, as we begin this homegoing celebration, we're going to have prayer by Reverend Nathan Fisher. He is the pastor of Irma Pendergrass, and we thank him for joining us with prayer. You may come at this time. If God be good to you, why don't you just clap your hands? Amen. If he made a way for you, why don't you say hallelujah? Hey, anyhow, we thank the Lord for this great opportunity as we get ready to come boldly to the throne of grace. Shall we look to the Lord, Lord Heavenly Father, our God, our Savior, our Deliverer, our Comforter, our soon coming King. Lord, we come right now to thee, O God, looking unto you as the author and as the finisher of our faith. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. Lord, you died, you gave your precious life that we may have a right to the tree of life. Lord, I just want to say thank you for this precious family, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you lay your hands upon them, Lord, that you comfort them in the wee hours of the night, oh God, that you lock your loving arms around them and let them know that you said that you will never leave them, neither will you forsake them. Lord, you're faithful and you got to hold to your word because you said it, oh God. Hey, God, we ask you right now to breathe upon them. I tell them, oh, in the name of Jesus, uh, oh God, we pray, Lord, that you go with them every step of the way. You've been good to them, Lord. You brought them into this life, Lord. You know, Lord, when we, when we get ready to call us home, we just want to be ready to meet you, God, because we know that you're on your way back, oh God. We ask you, Lord, to remember this service today. Let everything be done decently in order that you get all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you look down upon this shepherd of this flock, oh God. Keep her under the wings of your protection. Let her know, Lord, that, I, that you is a God and that you'll keep her in perfect peace. Now, Lord, we commend the service into your hand, into the hand of the man that will do right. And we thank you right now. In Jesus' holy name, we say hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. He's been too good to us just to sit down on him. Hey, can't nobody do a thing, Jesus. Oh, let me let this hang. Amen. A mic is dangerous in the hands of pastors, but we thank God, amen, for that awesome prayer. I'm having this lift brought up here because I want to be able to see the family, and I can't see y'all. So everybody going to be standing a little taller. How about that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now we are going to be blessed with a scripture reading coming from Sister Yvonne Benson. She's going to read our Old and our New Testament scripture. Amen. Praise God. Lord Church. Um, today I'll be reading from Psalm 63, verse 1, and verses 4 through 7, if you'll follow along with your hearts. O God, thou art my God, early I will seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with yes, joyful Lord. lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. I will also be reading from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that have labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. It's the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. We want to thank Sister Benson for lifting up our scriptures. We're going to have a musical selection. It's one of Mother Martha's favorite scriptures. I mean, favorite hymns. It's at the cross. We're going to be led by Sister Sherry Nunberry, and we're asking everyone, with the exception of the immediate family, if you can stand as we sing this song together, she's going to lead us in it. Amen? Amen. Praise God.
at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my life rolled away. We want to thank Sister Sherry Nonberry for lifting up Mother Martha's favorite hymn. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And we are now coming to the point where we will have Naya Johnson. She's going to come and read our cards and our letters. Amen. Praise God. I'm praying that God encourages your hearts. Much love, Linda Brent. Praying that you'll be filled with happy memories and surrounded by love and warm thoughts. A message of sympathy. Hope it helps to know that many heartfelt thoughts are with you and your family. Sandra and Leroy Bell. With heartfelt sympathies in your loss, God is my helper. The Lord is the sustainer of my life. May the healing gifts of time and the timeless love of God carry you gently through the loss you're feeling now. Cousin Sherry. Though we have to say goodbye, we're comforted to know that love has never left us and will never let us go. And even though we cannot know exactly where or when, we say goodbye knowing we will surely meet again. With sympathy and care and thoughts, Martha Talbot. Promises of God's comfort and hope. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. God's love was revealed among us in this world. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace I live, leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. May God's hope-filled promises bring comfort to your soul and peace to your heart. With heartfelt sympathy, Claudette Poole. Under the sadness, there is grace, and grace will lead us home. Wishing you the comfort of peace and hope today and the days to come. With deepest sympathy, Sonia Davis Jennings and family. Thinking of you in the loss of your mother. There is love that will live forever, and there are memories that will shine through the sorrow. May the wonderful memories of your mother's love be with you and comfort you at this time. With deepest sympathy, love Pastor Spyro, the, the officers and members of Smith Chapel. Amen. We want to thank Naya for reading those cards. Amen. We're not going to have um, the obituary read by Sister Lori Colburn. Amen. She will come now and read our obituary. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, uh, my first cousin, Martha. I'd like to read her obituary. Her journey. Martha Caroline Ingram Johnson was born on January 25th, 1938, in Paducah, Kentucky, to Herbert Lee Ingram and Geraldine Jones Ingram. Martha was the youngest of three siblings, Sister Irma Pennegrass and Brother James Gilbert Ingram. The family relocated to the city of Detroit from Paducah, Kentucky in 1947 and finally settled in the city of Inkster in 1949. Martha attended and graduated from Inkster Public Schools in 1955. She went on to further her education and career, graduating from Cleary College. She accepted Christ at an early age. On July 13, 1957, she was joined in holy matrimony to Ronald Odell Johnson. 
This reunion was blessed with two children, Rhonda, Charles, and Jeffrey, Desiree, grandmother to five, Daryl Elliott Jr., we call him DJ, Janice LaShawn LaCour, and Yvonne Marie Benson, which we call Vine, Maya and Gia Johnson, great-grandmother to 11, she was affectionately known as Grandma Johnson and Grammy. <laughs> Martha was employed in the Human Resource Department of the Burroughs Corporation and at Michigan Bell. In her later years, she worked as a professional at McNair Elementary School until leaving to become a full-time stay-at-home mom. Martha was extremely active in her community from Brownie and Girl Scout leader to a den mom for the club Cub Scouts. She was a dedicated member of Smith Chapel AME Church where she served alongside her husband for numerous, numerous years as supervisor of the Junior Usher Bread Mother of the Year Club 1982 and adopt a child program. Martha had a very sweet and humble and peaceful spirit with a dash of the Kentucky Flyer. She always operated in love and understanding, always seeing the positive when difficult situations would arise and often was the first to volunteer to help. Be not mistaken though, there was a spunky side of her that she enjoyed music, dancing, reading, and junking, she called it, at yard, yard and estate sales with her girlfriends and most of all, traveling with her camping group, the Starduster. Summers and weekends were often spent traveling from one side of the country to the other, from the Alaskan highway to the lighthouses of Nova Scotia. Ronald, Martha, Rhonda, and Jeffrey were road runners visiting just about all 50 states. <laughs> Martha departed this life on April 3rd at Arden Courts of Livonia, surrounded by her loved ones, but not before rededicating her life to Christ. Her husband, Ronald Odell Johnson, and brother, James Gilbert Ingram, completed her in death. Martha leaves to cherish her memory, her daughter, Rhonda, and son, Jeffrey, for whom she loved dearly and was so very proud of. Her grandchildren and great-grandchildren, Sister Irma, and a host of, uh, of other relatives and close friends. A special thank you to the uh, dedicated caregiver, the Nada. Thank you, Matt. The reading of Martha Johnson's obituary. Amen. Sister Colburn, you said she she relocated from Pachuca, Paducah, Paducah. So she in 1947, she'd been here for 77 years. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've read, we've heard the obituary. Now we're gonna have some reflections. We the family has identified three people that will come and give reflections. We have Leah Reeves, Addie Jennings, and Desiree Johnson in that order. And then we will follow with some words of comfort from Reverend Stanley Sims. Amen? Praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Leah, I'm Martha's niece, and I'm speaking on behalf of her nieces and nephew, Karen, Diane, Robert, and Cassandra. We thought it would be nice to share with you some of Aunt Martha's favorite things in her life that we knew of, so that you can have a glimpse of how beautiful and sweet our auntie really was. 
Aunt Martha's favorite things. She loved her beautiful pink crepe myrtle tree that she nurtured and grew in her backyard. She loved camping trips all over the United States, states with her friends and family and collected hundreds of mugs to prove it. She loved bright colored flowers of all kinds. She loved family history, family outings, and was working on a family tree. She loved talking on the phone daily to her girlfriends, Addie Jennings, Aubrey Searcy, Juanita Bush, Ruby Wells, and many others. She loved Folgers coffee in the morning, <laughs> noon, and sometimes at night. She loved grocery shopping every day, and sometimes if she took too long, Uncle Bean would call her and say, Martha Johnson, where are you? <laughs> she loved caramel cake for her birthdays. She loved chocolate candy turtles from Candy Cordons on Michigan Avenue. And just recently, I learned that she was a foodie because she talked in detail about the types of foods that she liked. She loved her nieces and nephews like children and we were so blessed to have her as an auntie. These are just a few things that I know were Aunt Martha's favorite things, and I'm sure she had many more. So Rhonda, Jeffrey, family and friends, when you think of Aunt Martha, just remember this song to help you through. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when you're feeling sad, just simply remember her favorite things. <laughs> and then you won't feel so sad. Thank you. met Martha Johnson when she became a volunteer at the Francis E. Davis Daycare Center, which was sponsored by Smith Chapel AME Church. Will Zetta Brown Williams and Mary Ruth Ross were the administrators, and Reverend Lowe was the pastor. Rhonda uh, was a two and a half year old and one of the first students to enroll in the daycare center. Martha was very diligent and an excellent worker. She always finished her assigned tasks and would help wherever she was needed. Martha will have such a pleasant, polite, and friendly. She had a beautiful smile and Excuse me, I just got, I'm, I have to apologize for being late. I thought it started at 11. Uh, Martha was always pleasant, polite, and friendly. She had a beautiful and an infectious smile. I loved my friend Martha, and she would always let the love the, of the fruit of the spirit of love run through her. Thank you all. That's all. share with you all a letter that I wrote to my mom. Um, dear mom, these words speak to the magnitude of your presence. You are 
sweetness personified, kindness personified, gracefulness exemplified. You are our matriarch, a kind and gentle nurturer. What you meant to all of us will be what we always treasure and remember. Thank you for sharing your family with me. Thank you so much for your son and the loving way you raised him to become a man that adores and appreciates me and our daughters. I couldn't be more grateful for the deep bond that we shared. You truly made me feel like a daughter and I will forever cherish every memory that I have of you. So whenever I hear songs of birds at any time of the day, see a crepe myrtle in full bloom, watch a cardinal perch on a branch, stare at the green in your son's eyes, see the cream in Gia's skin, taste your perfected yam recipe, or make a second place version of your cherry cheesecake. My heart will smile and I will think of you. Go on to be with God and be with dad. I love you dearly, the other Mrs. Johnson. Jeffrey and Rhonda and the rest of the family, I greet you on behalf of the uh, Sims, Green, and Lowe family. It's kind of difficult for me to talk about Martha, because she meant so many things to uh, our family. We go back to probably 1955, right here in this church, we all met. Jacqueline Fuller, Carolyn Fuller, Sammy Diller, myself, and uh, a number of other young people we were a very close-knit group. And one of the things that I always look back on and was the kindness and love that Martha always showed to not only myself, but to everyone that she came in contact with. So as we uh, reflect upon her life, we know that, uh, you know, she was a great loving soul. Uh, when I went into the ministry, uh, I was, it was my choice, but I, I had to leave my family behind, my mother, and someone had to care for her. It was Martha who was dedicated to caring for my mother all through my ministry. So I, I, I really want you to know that I, I love each of one, one of you. And it was through Martha that I got to know and love you. What I'd like for you to carry with you as you leave this place, that if you look to the hills, <laughs> that's where your help is. Give God the glory in your life, and he'll carry you through every phase of living. God bless you. God keep you. Hallelujah and amen. Amen.
Amen, amen. Yeah, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the life and the legacy of Sister Martha Johnson. Amen. A lot has already been said on today, and we have now the resolution that will become that will be read by Sister Frances Chisholm, followed by a musical selection, another one of Mother Martha's favorites. His eye is on the sparrow. Sister Sherry Numberry will come. resolution. Mrs. Martha Carolyn Ingram Johnson. Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us day by day, unseen, unheard, but always there, still loved, still missed, and extremely near. Whereas God in his in in infinite wisdom saw fit to call our sister, Mrs. Martha Johnson, from among our ranks to her eternal home and to everlasting glory on April the 3rd, 2024. Whereas Sister Johnson was a faithful member of Smith Chapel and participated in many activities, she was very interested in youth, leading them and molding them in activities that would support the church through their adulthood such as supervisor of the junior usher board, where many of those uh, children continue to serve through adulthood, and some of them are serving presently now. And the uh, Parish Pals was another youth group that she was head of. Whereas Sister Johnson was always friendly, greeting everyone with a smile. She was lively, upbeat, fun-loving. She was very interested in serving others as she worked to prepare food for the repasses. She was always a member of, also a member of the Senior Citizens Club, making and taking gifts to brighten the lives of homebound elderly members. She was also voted Mother of the Year here at this church in 1982. Therefore be it resolved that the pastor, officers, and members of Smith Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church extend our deepest sympathy and love in the loss of your loved one. Our thoughts and prayers are with you at this difficult time. And be it further resolved on this 12th day of April that a copy of this resolution be given to the family of Sister Martha Johnson and a copy be placed in the archives of Smith Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Humbly submitted, Reverend Twyla B. Todd, our pastor. And why should the shadows, shadows come? And why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven? Jesus is my portion, oh, constant friend is he, oh, his eye is on the 
a celebration, church. We got a lot to celebrate for. She lived her life. Hallelujah. And we thank God for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, we gather here today. Hallelujah. To praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life and the legacy of Mother Martha Johnson. She was a beloved mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister, auntie, cousin, and friend. We come together today in the shadow of sorrow and grief, and yet we realize the glorious light, the greatest hope that the world has ever known is the promise of an eternal life for a faithful Christian. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there has already been some wonderful things said here today about Sister Martha. We heard from Mother Ruff, a good friend of hers, amen. We heard from Leah Rees, who shared everything, some of the favorite things of Mother Ruff. And I learned then we both love Folgers coffee, amen. Sister Abby Jeannie, she shared, she shared time that she spent in the daycare with Mother Ruff, amen. Mother, did I say Mother Ruff? Did I say it a couple other times too? Oh my God, Mother Ruff, I ain't, I ain't putting you down yet. You're just her best friend. We're going to correct that. Okay. You're going to dock me. Uh, <laughs> you're going to dock me, Jeffrey. <laughs> Every time I mess it up, I do that. I don't know what it is. But anyway, we love Mother Martha. Everything I was saying was about Mother Ruff's best friend, Martha. How about that? Amen. Amen. And we like what Leah said about her in the Folgers coffee. Sister Abby Jennings, she, she talked about Mother Roth in the daycare center and how her daughter, Mother Martha, that's scary, y'all. That's scary. Let me stop and pray. I'm going to stop and pray because that's not, I don't feel comfortable about that. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before you right now. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for what eyes have seen and what ears have heard. I thank you for the life, the legacy of Mother Martha Caroline Ingram Johnson. I thank you for everyone who has witnessed her life, who I've shared on today, and particularly Mother Ruff. For some reason, I'm calling out her name, Heavenly Father. But I thank you for her life and her legacy. And I thank you for many, many, many more years you're going to bless her with. But right now, it is about Mother Martha. So I'm asking you right now, Lord, to rise up inside of me and demonstrate your power. Let your will be done, Lord. It's not about me, but it's all about you. And how you can get the glory. Hallelujah. 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 The life and the legacy of Mother Martha Caroline Ingram Johnson. Amen. We heard some things already about her. How much she is loved. How much she is appreciated. We heard that. Amen. We heard how Reverend Sims talked about how she not only loved, but she gave back love to her, to his mother. Amen. We thank God for that. And then we thank God for just the things that we are about to hear. The word that he has placed on my heart to share with you. Amen. So I want to encourage you for what you have already heard. I want to encourage you to hold on to those memories. Amen. They will give you comfort. And, and as you think about it, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning when you think about that time that you had to spend with Mother Martha. Amen. In the name of Jesus. There are many occasions that draw people together, but none affect us more. Hallelujah. Than the loss of a loved one. Your father, now your mother. Your brother, now your sister. Your grandfather, now your grandmother. The Johnson family has gathered on 
all these occasions, amen? And although they weep, I believe they and we all can find joy in knowing that their loved one, Mother Martha, has gone home to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. In times like this, you turn to the only place, church, where you can find genuine comfort, and that's in the word of God. Hallelujah. We want to turn to his word because his word tells us to study, to show thyself approved, the right, rightly dividing the word of truth. His word is the basic information before leaving earth. Amen. So this morning, I want to share with you the word from 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 55. It's a familiar verse, y'all. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. It says, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Hallelujah. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall we be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. The Lord will have me speak to you on the subject, dying to live again. Hallelujah. Now, the greatest hope that any of us can have is the hope of resurrection. Amen. Amen. We enjoy life and none of us want to go by way of the grave. Yet, the truth remains that unless Jesus come back before our appointed time, there is not a one of us, young or old, who will escape the appointment with death. And although Mother Martha is no longer with us in the physical sense, her spirit, her wisdom, her love, that all, they all will continue to live on in the cherished memories that she leaves behind. Amen. Amen. Mother Martha lived a full and vibrant life, spanning some 86 years, filled with love and laughter and countless memories. She was a devoted wife, a loving mother, and an adoring grandmother, whom they affectionately called Grandma Johnson or Granny. She was devoted auntie and a loyal friend. And from the various jobs that she had and the volunteer work that she did, it was evident that she loved children. Amen. Amen. She went from having two children to gaining five grandchildren and 11 great-grandchildren. Amen. Talking about a large family. One time when I visited Mother Martha and Brother Ron, I went there to serve them communion. She showed me her photo album. She had a lot of them, y'all. But she showed me the one of her grandchildren, and she had the biggest smile on her face when she was talking about them. One of her grandchildren came over and put some acorns on the windowsill, and she was trying to explain to me why they were still there. She said, I just love them. I can't let them go. Amen. Her love for the Lord. Her love for the Lord was unconditional. Mother Martha, she would read her Bible daily and when she no longer could come to church, and after COVID hit, she was able to watch the service virtually. And just last month, she was right here, y'all, sitting right there in the back of the church. Her daughter, Rhonda, brought her to church to praise with her family. And you know what? We were just excited. We were, I think we were more excited than she was that she was here. Hallelujah. It was such a blessing to see her because there's nothing 
like being in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. On another occasion, she talked about the many trips that she took with Brother Ron and Rhonda and Jeffrey. She talked about those trips and all the mugs that she collected in every place that they went. So many mugs that Brother Ron, he had a shelf built in their kitchen just above the kitchen table to display them all. Hmm. Now, I believe the memories of the places that Mother Martha traveled meant so much to her that they even had them on display at the nursing home. Amen? They bought a few mugs and they put them at the nursing home. On April the 2nd, I was able to visit Mother Martha just one last time. And even though there's no place like home, her children did all they could to make sure she had a touch of home right there in her room. Not only did she have her mugs, but she also had her Bible. She had pictures and paintings of the paintings when they went on trips. She had her favorite blanket. What caught my eye was her blue devotional, He Whispers My Name. She had marked to the page of Always With You. And she referenced the verse in that, in that devotional. It referenced the verse Psalms 23, 4 that said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort me. Yes, I prayed with her. We read that page out loud. And Mother Martha, even though she was in a soft sleep, I really believe she heard me. I really do. Mother Martha knew that she was not alone. She knew, hallelujah, that he was always watching over her. She knew. And because she knew that, she had no reason to be afraid. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yes, Mother Martha's presence illuminated the lives of all the people that she came in contact with. And her absence will undoubtedly leave a void that cannot be filled. Amen. Hallelujah. But we find relief, church. We find relief in that scripture that we read, 1 Corinthians, where it says, We shall not all sleep, but in a moment of the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Paul reminds us that death is not the end, but it's a transformation. He speaks of a future event. A moment when all who have passed from this life will be raised incorruptible. It is a promise of hope, a promise of a reunion. Let me hear you say reunion. reunion. Hallelujah. With our loved ones who have gone before us. As we mourn the loss of Mother Martha, we are reminded that death is not the final chapter of our existence. Instead, it's a transition. Amen. It's a moment when the perishable is replaced with by the imperishable. Amen. And when the mortal is clothed with immortality. In the face of death, we find hope. We find hope in the promise of resurrection. In the assurance that death has been conquered. Hallelujah. And that eternal life awaits those who believe. And you know what that means? You have to believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whomsoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. You have to believe. For Mother Martha, this passage is not merely words on a page, but is reality embraced and lived out. Hallelujah. Her faith was not in vain, for she believed. Hallelujah. She believed in the one who conquered death and secured our redemption. She believed the sting of death has been conquered and the grave has lost its power to hold us captive. She believed, church. Hallelujah. All this was done through the sacrifice of Christ and his triumph over death. We are assured 
of our ultimate victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we commend our beloved into the hands of the creator, let us hold fast to the hope of resurrection. Let us hold fast to the promise of eternal life. You can probably see it now. Hmm. Mother Martha reunited with Brother Ron. You can hear her saying, Martha, you can hear Brother Ron saying, Martha, hallelujah. And Mother Martha, with that spunky side of her that would enjoy music and dancing, we would probably hear her singing, reunited and it feels so good. Reunited because we're understood. There's one perfect fit and sugar. This one is it. All right. We both are so excited because we're reunited. Baby, baby. Now we could probably hear her singing that. Amen. To Brother Ron. Amen. When you look at it that way, it brings joy to our hearts to know that Mother Martha, she did not die. She was given an opportunity to live again, reunited with Brother Ron. Hallelujah. The days of aches and pains for Mother Martha are gone. The trips to the doctor have ceased. Knowing this brings joy and comfort to your heart. And our comfort is found in Jesus Christ, y'all. Because he promised us, hallelujah, life everlasting if we believe. Amen. So I want to challenge each and every one of you who are under the sound of my voice. I want to challenge you to accept him for today because you don't know the day nor the hour that the Lord is going to call you home. We know what the doctors say, but we know who's in control, right? God is in control. And although death sometimes seems final, for us born again Christians, death is an elevation. Mother Martha has been elevated. Hallelujah. And her story is not over. She just started a new chapter in her life, walking with Jesus Christ. And you too, you too can experience that same thing when you give your life to Lord. You will be reunited with your loved ones just by giving your life to the Lord. Hallelujah. So we thank God that Mother Martha died so she can live. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Because Mother Martha lives. Because she is now reunited with her husband. Because she left a generation here that can reflect on the time that they spent with her, how she raised them and loved on them and did everything she could sacrifice for them. Hallelujah. We can celebrate her. Hallelujah. So I want to thank God again for each and every one of you who thought it not robbery to come and share in this homegoing celebration. I pray that something said has blessed you. Hallelujah. That you might bless somebody else that you might be able to continue to check on this family and bless them, share some stories with them to make them laugh. Weepy man, joy for a night. But God will send the joy, amen? Hallelujah. So I thank each and every one of you again. We will now have the funeral. They will now come because we're going to do our committal right here, amen? And then we're going to go to the cemetery. But we're going to do the committal here. If the funeral people can come at this time, Hallelujah. While they're coming for the family to have a last visit, I'm sure if we just ask Sister Sherry Nam Barry, I'm sure she can give us another selection. What y'all think? Wouldn't y'all like to hear her sing again? After all, this is a celebration. Amen. This is our time to celebrate the Lord for all that he has done and all that he continues to do. So I'm sure God has gave you something. Hallelujah. I hear it. Hallelujah. I shall wear a crown. Yeah, Lord. Lay Lord. 
crown. I shall wear a crown. Hallelujah. Crown. When it's all over. When it's all over. When it's all over, I shall wear a crown. We're going to wear a crown. Crown. I shall wear a crown. Yes, we're going to wear a crown. Crown. When it's all over. When it's all over. When it's all over, what you gonna do? I shall see God's face. We're gonna see his face. See him face to face. I shall see his face. Yes, we're gonna see his face. Face when it's all over. When it's all over. shall see God's face. Thank you, Lord. Face. We want to see your face, Lord. I shall see his face. See the Lord's face when it's all over. When it's all over. When it's all over, I shall wear a crown. Hallelujah. I shall wear a crown. Crown when it's all over. Yeah, Lord. Yay! What you gonna do? I'm going to put on my robe. Put on a robe. And tell the story. And tell the story. How I made it over. How I made it over. Mother Martha is telling I'm her story. I'm going to put on Hallelujah. my robe. And tell she's telling it through the lives the of each story. and every one of you. Yes, she's telling her story. Hallelujah. I'm going to put on my robe yeah. and tell the story of how I made it, how I made it over. We're going to put on our robe. I'm going to put on yes. my robe. Can you tell it? How Can you tell it? it? Yeah. I'm going to put on a robe and tell the story. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord, I made it over. Hallelujah. I get home. Soon as I get home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tell the story. Thank you, Lord. Thank
Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to put on my robe. Yay, Lord. Tell the story. How I made it. How I made it. Yay. I'm going to put on. Hallelujah. I think we need to celebrate, y'all. We need to celebrate. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? We know that Mother Martha liked to sing. She liked to dance. She liked to celebrate, amen? So as we celebrate, hallelujah, we got another selection coming. Amen? Hallelujah. This is a celebration. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Where I'm going. She said, if you want to know where she's going, hallelujah. She's going up yonder. Hallelujah. If you want to know yeah. where I am going. Hallelujah. Where I am going. Soon, if anybody asks you, anybody asks you where I am going, where I am going, where I'm going, soon, I'm going up. Beyond. Can we sing that, y'all? I'm going up beyond. Take the pain, yeah. the heartache, pain brings the comfort in knowing I'll soon be gone. But as God gives me grace, I've got to run this race until I see my. I can't 
can take the pain the heartache pain brings the comfort in the wing I'll soon be gone but as God gives me grace I've got to run this race until like we had ourselves a, a little mini concert, amen? We want to thank Sister Sherry Nonberry, amen? Hallelujah. Some glad thank you, morning Jesus. when this life is over, I'll fly away to a land where joy and uh, oh, I'll, yes, Lord, fly away. Uh, oh, I'll fly away. Can you stand to your feet as we sing this song? And let's just praise the Lord together. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to our feet, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Again, we thank Sister Sherry Nunn Barry for that mini concert. Amen. Hallelujah. We now come to the point in our service where we will have our committal. Man that is born of woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and withers. He flees like a shadow and continues not. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom may we seek our succor, but of thee. O Lord, who of our sins are justly displeased? Yet, O Lord God, most holy, O Lord, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not unto the bitter pains of eternal death. Amen. Thou knoweth the Lord's, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayers, but spare us, Lord, most holy. O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal suffer us not on our last hour of any pains of death to fall from thee. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased sister, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world. The earth, the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his unknown glorious body, according to the mighty workings whereby he is able to subdue all things unto him. I heard the voice from heaven saying unto me, Write from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Won't you join me now? in the reciting of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. This concludes our service. We are preparing now to go to the cemetery. And then the repast will be immediately after back here at Smith Chapel. Amen. Immediately after you leave the cemetery. You may be seated as we prepare to process out.
Victory, victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last he will stand upon the earth and after my skin has been thus destroyed then from my flesh I shall see God who I see shall see on my side and my eyes shall behold and my heart faints within me for we brought nothing to the world and we not Thing. This is the word of God, the people of God. Praise be. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. When we call on that great name, oh, Jesus, Jesus, we love the name Jesus. We have the victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Get thee behind, victory today is mine.